I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who was, is, and is to come, and the reason why we are here, to celebrate God's love and redemption, God's continuous work of bringing salvation to the world. It is good to be here with you all, and I am praying that it is good for you to be here as well as we gather in worship. We want to welcome those of you who will be worshiping with us online. It is good to be with you just as well. I uh, just want to highlight uh, for your um, consideration or uh, to, to remind you to put on your prayer list those people that you see listed on our prayer concerns. We've added uh, Kevin Williamson there who is recovering from a, a serious knee infection and I believe that he is in rehab and we want to continue to keep he, him and his entire family in prayer and please be in prayer for all the others that you see listed here. Um, I believe uh, Liz Elliott has an announcement for us and right after Tina has an announcement. Hi Reid, how are you? <laughs> so first of all, welcome back to all of the college students I see gathered around us. I'll have mine home soon. But um, just a big hand of applause for these young people for working so hard this year and coming back. So I'm Liz Elliott, and, and on behalf of SPRC, I have some announcements to share with you about upcoming parties. Um, because, you know, a big part of SPRC's role is to plan parties for folks who move on. So first of all, Jane Webb's recognition um, to celebrate her many, many years at DUMC upon her retirement has been shifted a little bit um, until June 5th, and that was at Jane's request. Um, and I'm hoping that folks got the word out. We put it out in many ways, but mark your calendars for Sunday, June 5th. Other events coming up very soon, next Sunday after service in the Connections Cafe, we'll have a reception for Cora Horst. She is stepping down as Director of Children's Ministry here at DUMC. Um, she's staying on at Pleasant Plains Preschool, but we'll have, you know, a time of fellowship, a piece of cake, some coffee, and just recognizing the contributions that Cora has made to DUMC these past several years, and then, on June 12th, stand up. Everyone here, I think, knows that our own Pastor B has taken on a new appointment as senior pastor at Christ Church in Baltimore City. <laughs> Sunday, June 12th, will be his last Sunday here with us at DUMC. In addition to Senior Sunday, we will recognize his support and love for our congregation after the Sunday service in the Connections Cafe. Um, and we're collecting a purse for both Pastor B and for Jane Webb. So if that's something that you feel called to do, absolutely put a check in the offering plate contribute online and note either Jane's purse or Pastor B's purse. And finally, my, my last um, hat, not SPRC, is as the Connections Cafe coordinator. If anyone here feels called to help, please come see me, send me an email, give me a phone call, because I really could use some help providing that time of fellowship. And finally, I'm hoping very soon that I'll have announcements for the congregation about the role of the associate pastor. We're working really, really hard behind the scenes to get things situated and be ready to share with you all. So just to let everyone know, things are happening, and I'll have an announcement soon. And I'll hand the mic over to Tina. Good morning. So uh, most of you that are, have been following youth group know that today is scavenger hunt day. We're staying here on campus. We're not driving around in cars. Pray that we don't have any thunderstorms and rain because there's a few things that you're gonna do outside. If you're coming, I would wear shoes that you don't mind getting muddy because as long as it's not thunderstorming and raining, you're still going outside. So just FYI on that one. 
Next week is the final formal youth group for this season, and we're having a cookout and a movie. So everyone is invited to that. And um, we're doing, the movie is to be determined. They'll be voted on this week as I get something out to the youth to decide what they want to watch. Um, and then there are going to be three summer events, one each month. Uh, if you look in the beacon when that comes out, there are some things in there that give the dates. Exactly what we're doing, we don't know yet, because although August will be a pool party, July will be uh, fun, faith, friends, and food. Um, and that will involve a little bit of mission work in the morning. And then the final in June will be something fun, and I'm not quite sure exactly what that's going to be yet, but that will be June 12th, so stay tuned for all that. Um, Vacation Bible School is open. I know in the bulletin it says see Tina Kelly to register. You don't actually have to see me to register. There's forms out back. There's also forms online. So if you haven't been to our new um, website yet, you can find it and it is under um, youth or, or not youth, sorry, it's under children and then you'll see a link to VBS and there's a link to the form to sign up for both the youth helpers and those that want to attend. So continue to sign up for that, that would be great. And then the final thing, given that June 12th is our Youth Sunday, we are at that time of year where we do senior binders. So if you um, have a senior or know a senior um, and have never, if you're not familiar with, with senior binders, it's a lovely gesture that I don't know how long we've been doing it, but for a while, I think. And most of the seniors really appreciate it, where you put a page in there. Um, if it's someone, if it's your senior, you can get other family members. It doesn't just have to be people from DUMC that contribute pages to the binder. For my daughter, I actually included a page from my grandmother who was no longer with us because she had provided my daughter a series of cards and things over the years, and I had copies of that and I put that in the page and she thought that was awesome. <laughs> so, you know, you can do any kind of thing you want to do, Senior Binder. Um, Kelly Shiflett is kind of organizing that for us this year. So you can, if you've got Paige, if you've got any questions, you can contact Kelly, you can contact me, um, or of course you can just, you know, send a message to the office at D Damascus and we can answer that as well. So I think that's all I have for this week. Thank you. Just a, a couple more quick announcements. Marsha Hoffman wants everyone to know that she's in the back for anyone interested in uh, buying ornaments in commemoration of our 200th year of ministry here in Damascus. Also want to let you know that next Sunday uh, is the last Sunday for Children and Youth Sunday School, May the 22nd. That is the last Sunday for Sunday School. Also, just to dovetail Jane's um, celebration, so that means there's more time uh, for you to get your tributes in if you have not been able to do that. So please get that in so that we can compile that for her. Amen? Amen. If you would turn with me to page three of your bulletin and join with me responsively in the call to worship, would you stand? Last but not least, I want to thank Bonnie Coster for leading us as our liturgist today. Uh, I, I neglected to add her name, and I just wanted to recognize her. Beloved, we gather to worship God who shows no partiality. We all receive God's word of hope and peace sent through Christ. We are all God's people.
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you extend your love to us and valued us as your good creation. You've shown us that there is nothing that can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are grateful for the grace that we have received because of your abounding love and faithfulness toward all humanity. Open our eyes and help us to see each other from your viewpoint of love. Open our hearts and grant us the courage to move beyond our own affinities. Set us free from grudges, embedded biases, and contempt. Lord, search our hearts and know that we desire to be your devoted servants, drawn to the likeness of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and dedicated to our own transformation and the transformation of the world. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, may that Spirit fall on us. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me, or the Lord be with you. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from Acts 11, verses 1 through 18. The apostles and believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told him the whole story. Told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three, three men who had been uh, sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized the water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gifts he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they said no, no, they had no further objection and, pray, and praised God saying, so then, even to Gentiles, God has grant, granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is from John, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious God, we come once again like curious children, sitting, O oh God, at your feet, listening attentively, hearing what you will say to us in this sacred space at this sacred time. God, our ears are open, our hearts are open, and we are attentive. We ask God now that you speak. For this servant and your servants here are listening. Help me, God, to focus. And only, O oh God, stand and do what is assigned to me so that these, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. 
I would be remiss if I did not ask us to lift up our senior pastor, Catherine, Reverend Dr. Catherine Woodrow, in prayer as she has taken a much needed day off um, because yesterday was the memorial service of her stepdaughter down in Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, I'm happy that she came to the awareness uh, that she just needed to be away for at least a day. So please keep her and the entire family in prayer. I was a little mixed feelings about where to stand this morning <laughs> simply because um, this text and this sermon in my view requires more conversation than preaching. <laughs> um, but because I am on the down side of my latter days here, I, I felt it necessary and appropriate to just honor this sacred space that was built for preaching. Um, and just for your knowledge, if it matters, I, I like to preach in the center because I like to engage everyone and I like to engage uh, people as if we're having a spiritual conversation. So we continue, we're continuing this sermon series, Living a Resurrection Life. And this morning we are turning our attention again to Acts and considering the call that we have, a call to a risky witness. And as I was reading and preparing this, I, I recall the conversation an exchange that Jesus was having with Peter when he appeared to the disciples in the Gospel of John on the beach and to have breakfast with them. And after pushing Peter several times to consider his love for his Lord, he said these words to Peter. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. And my mind went to that exchange with Jesus because we know Peter to be the one who was always struggling, always trying to get it right, always stepping into places where he ought not. Jesus, Peter was the one who was the first to jump out of the boat when he saw Jesus walking on water. Peter was the one who was ready to rebuke Jesus when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. G Peter was the one always in the place of wrestle, I interpret it as, because of his deep love for Christ. And Peter was the one who then we realized was called to make the proclamation at the Pentecost experience when the church broke out. But I suppose that Peter did not consider in this exchange with Jesus. I suppose that he did not consider that stretching out his hands and having someone fasten his belt and taking him to places that he did not want to go, I suppose that he did not consider that that meant that he was being called to revolutionize the societal viewpoints and disrupt and possibly dismantle social constructs. Peter, in this somewhat defending of what happened 
at Cornelius' house, when he became obedient, if you read Acts chapter 10, to the call when he had a dream, and at the same time, Cornelius had a dream, and he was sent to Cornelius' house to do what God sent him to do. And this is what he was recounting in the scripture that we read in Acts 11. He was demonstrating for us God's intention to break through the boundaries that so often separate us and shift our own thinking and possibly shift our limitations to destroy, I would even say, the limitations that causes or wants to get in the way of advancing God's kingdom. I was all over the place when I won with, as I wrestled with how to present this conversation. If you know me, I, I like to be very transparent, so I don't have a problem telling people when I don't feel like preaching, as I did last week. I don't have a problem telling people when I'm having a struggle with the scripture. I don't have a problem telling you when, when it's time for us because I believe in authenticity and I believe that too long we have built up so many things that I can't find the proper word to describe now in the life of the church that we don't really give way for the freedom and the openness for the spirit to really deal with us in the times when we are in community together. I believe that is what God desires for, for us and from us, and I believe that is where people, as these Gentiles did, are, are placed in a space where the Spirit can fall on them. Because some describe this moment in the early church as a watershed moment. Because among them, among Peter and all those who gathered back in chapter 10 and in chapter 11, there became now this new awareness of God's redemptive work in the world. They became, it became among them an obvious, an awakening of, and a realization that possibly, possibly through the work of the Holy Spirit, God wanted us to extend ourselves, to open ourselves, to move beyond our own cultural norms and limitations and break down our ideological stances, possibly. It was an awareness for us, for the reality of Galatians 3.28, that there is no longer Jew nor Greek, slave or free, or no longer male or female for all who are in Christ Jesus. There is no separation between God's people. If I, be, if I can be more transparent to you, it, it is the greatest lesson I learned in my time here. And the greatest, not only conviction, but, 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 but call that I feel that I'm, that I'm, that God is placing upon me that we must, we must dismantle this generational separation, segregation that happens on Sunday morning. Because the kingdom of God is bigger than liberals and conservatives. The kingdom of God is bigger than black and white. The kingdom of God is bigger than brown and yellow. The kingdom of God is bigger than so many things that we use as labels for our own securities and for the purposes of separation and even more for subjugation. These Gentiles have come to this real realization that God intended not only for God's people, Israel, to come into the knowledge of God's saving grace and God's redemptive work in the world, but they came to an awareness, oh my goodness, is it possible, my interpretation of the scripture, is it possible that God might want God's spirit to fall on people who are different than us? 
Is it possible that God might want us to include people who express themselves different than us? Is it possible that God might just want to see God's people come together wherever they may be from, from all walks of life, giving God praise simply because we have all experienced the move of God among us? For that, my friends, is the very meaning of Pentecost. I know this is not a Pentecost Sunday. We will talk about that more on Pentecost. But that is the very, the very gist, if not the, the, the thesis, my brother, of Pentecost, that God poured out God's spirit on the world because Jesus met with the disciples early in Pentecost and he said to them that you will be my witness from so from, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to all the world. But here's my question for us to consider this morning. As we consider our own cultural anthropology, as we consider what informs us, uh, informs our viewpoints or influences what builds our community, and the places we find belonging. As we consider that, I ask you the question, to what extent, how far does your world go? Where are the limitations of your world? I was thinking about the sitcom Moms. <laughs> and in one of the episodes, Christy, the daughter, I think that's her name, has found a relationship with someone who has a lot of money. And her mother is excited, but she is excited, she's excited because she now sees their life evolving into a new lifestyle. And then when Christy realized that the man was not for her because he was essentially a jerk, we found the episode, we found that the scene shifted and if you watch the, the, the sitcom, you know that they're in AA, and they're in the AA meeting, and the mom is in tears because she is saying to herself, she's losing her people. <laughs> you have to see it to get the joke, sorry. <laughs> and I brought that up to ask you, who are your people? How do we define our people? Is it history? Is it a learning that we've had in our upbringing? Is it something that is imbi uh, embedded? How do we define who our people are? And are we willing to be so obedient like Peter to allow God to open us up and to come in contention with that viewpoint wherever it may be? I would even ask you even the more, at what point in your life, if you remember when those viewpoints came in contention with family and friends or did you did you hide them so that you can continue your social connections or did you like Peter become obedient to say you know this is the way I believe God sees the world and I know that God has called me to follow a Christ who came into the world and walked even through Samaria and a God that called me to not only be a part of a church that is sent out into the world, not only in Jerusalem, not only in my neighborhood, not only in Judea, but in Samaria, the places where I know that there are people who are very different and very, and please hear me clearly, Peter did not go proselytizing. Peter did not go saying that you all need to be like us. Peter went simply to say, let me tell you about this Jesus because the gospel is simply, simply a message of God's love in the world. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, wherever you're hurting, wherever your struggles are, whatever color you are, whatever culture you are, whatever ethnicity you are, whatever language you are, let me tell you about this God who came into the world simply because he wanted the world to know that there is a love that penetrates and, and, and casts out all of those differences because I believe that that same love belongs to you like it belongs to me. And so long as we can be together within the midst of that God's love, all other things will come into place. Let 
we are called, my brothers and sisters, to a risky witness because it sometimes requires us to be in contention with our own views. Sometimes it requires us to be in contention with our own communities. Sometimes it requires us to be in contention with our own family. Hmm. But as we can see at the end of the story, God's desire is not for us to be in contention. God's desire ultimately for us and for the world, and we, I think we all said that we agree on this, is God desires for us to be transformed. Because ultimately that's what happened to the community when the community now heard Peter's uh, defense, I'm calling it, of what happened in Joppa, and he said, look, I came to the conclusion that could it be that the same spirit that fall, fell on us fell on these people? And it said, the community now says, oh my goodness, God gave them the same gift. Oh my goodness, there is no difference. Oh my goodness, we are indeed all God's people. Oh my goodness, Praise God because we can be together in community from wherever we're from and be an expression of the kingdom of God in the world. Oh, my goodness. What a joy it would be when we get to that place. And I just want to say to you, as I am including myself in this statement, that we have a great opportunity before us in the world we're living in today. Because although we have made great advancements from where we have come from, we have put up more barriers of separation. And I think you and I have a great opportunity. It is not a challenge. I'm look, I, it is an opportunity before us to let the world know that this Christ that Jesus, this Christ that God raised from the dead is very much real and present and able to cast out all of those things that we are trying to put up in the world, even in the church, to cause us to look less like than the kingdom of God. Oh, I look forward to the day when we can just praise God because we realize that God's Repentance and redemptive work in the world is for all, all, all who desire. And I look forward to the day when all of us can really live into the definition of all. Amen.
Would you enter in a posture of prayer as we go before the Lord? Hear us, O oh God, in our groans and our moans as we approach your throne of grace on this morning, God, having the opportunity through your grace, O oh God, to experience you in this space. Hear our groans and our moans, O oh God, as we approach your throne of grace, knowing, God, that we can find mercy asking God that you, Lord, would continue to speak to us as we engage you in prayer now. Help us, O oh God, to hear your still small voice. Help us, God, to be open to share with you, O oh God, the struggles that we might be having even right now, struggles that are personal from financial to family strife to the needs of healing, to comfort need, to even God struggles with our own faith. Hear us, O oh God, as we approach your throne, boldly asking, O oh God, that you, Lord, would transform our hearts even now, God, to be fully obedient to your call to follow you and fully obedient, O oh God, to be taken and led to place, places and spaces that we could not have imagined. God, as we come before you, we are very much aware, O oh God, of all of the needs in our world. The need for peace. The need for us, O oh God, to see each other in our humanity and the need for us to build each other up and the need, O oh God, for us to be able to express your love deeply, your agape love, O oh God, not the love that is based on feeling, but the love that is fused simply by an understanding of your love for us. Might we be so bold and so courageous and believe with such conviction, O oh God, that our demonstration of that love can permeate throughout the world, that it can even end wars. Might we be so bold and courageous, O oh God, and with such conviction know that our demonstration of that love can open up the doors, O oh God, of our church so wide that there will be no discussion about any person, whether or not they belong. Might our demonstration of our love be so bold, O oh God, and so courageous and filled with such conviction that we believe that we can dismantle all barriers in the world. Hear us, God, in our prayers now, God, as we lift up those who have been named in our community and those, O oh God, even are on our hearts asking God that you would be present with them, asking God that you, Lord, would attend to their need. We continue, O oh God, to pray for our community, this faith community, this mission site, in this community that was called out and sent to the world to be, God, a representation and to carry out your work of redemption. Would you, God, allow your Holy Spirit to fall upon us and lead us into the new future that is for us? Lord, end the war in Ukraine. End the violence in our streets. Lord, lead us in how we must shift our thinking and our, our way, O oh God, of dealing with our finances so that we might be able, O oh God, to restore our economy. Might we know, God, what part we play in that. Thank you, God, for this time before you, for this sweet moment of prayer.
We pray it, O oh God, in the name of the one who gave us a model prayer so that we might come before you freely, even when we don't have the right words. When he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to take this time now uh, to carry on our ritual of friendship. Would you take time to sign in our attendance sheet and take this moment to say hello by head nod or by word to a neighbor as we now prepare for the giving of our tithes and offerings. prayer. Let us pray. Generous and giving God, we offer gifts this day as those who have received so much more. You gave yourself to us and ask only for devotion. 
yet we got distracted by the world. You offered all of creation to meet our needs for food and shelter, yet we decided we wanted more. You offered your love to all, yet you decided some were more worthy and valuable than others. So you gave us the repentance that leads to life, and all our giving fails by comparison. Dedicate us, we pray, in Christ's holy name, amen. Brothers and sisters, receive this blessing. May the incomparable love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon us, be with us, guide us this day and every day henceforth. Go in peace. Amen.